Good morning. Another beautiful day in San Antonio. Could use a little rain, but another beautiful day. I hope you all are enjoying these mid 70 temperatures. You know, I, I think it's just wonderful. I think it's just wonderful. Well, welcome all of you out there on Zoom and here in the sanctuary. We join together one more time to do what? Worship. Worship. That's the right answer. And who? Oh, here we go. Yeah, both are good. Both are good. Yes, absolutely. Well, welcome today. And uh, I see Jackson's on board. Good morning, Jackson. That's that's good because he's doing the prayer for peace today. Uh, we got Jay here who's going to bring us our morning message. And we got Harriet here who's going to bring us our disciples' generous response. And then the rest of it, well, here I am. So it's going to be a wonderful day surrounded by wonderful people. Uh, I want to read you the latest. Um, some of you out there on Zoom may not know. Everybody in the congregation knows now, though, that it's here in the building. It has to do with COVID guidance. Uh, mask wearing. Due to the decline in COVID cases and hospitalizations in Bear County, the numbers have gone down. They're still not where we would like them to be, but they are on the downward trend. So if you're in the sanctuary and you decide you want to wear a mask, that's perfectly fine. However, if you don't, except when we sing songs, we're still gonna wear the mask. But other than that, unless you choose to wear the mask, you don't have to here in the sanctuary. Now, you all at home, you don't have to do either. You know, you want to sing, you can, you know, you can, you can, uh, you know, not use the mask and you definitely don't have to use it while you're watching what's going on on your laptop or phone or what have you. Uh, but, but please be aware that we're continuing monitoring. We got Richard, he's the, he's, he's the watchdog on this. And um, he, him and I had talked about, about this. And then when they got back from Graceland, he sent all of the one on the committees a note. And of course we all went, you know, so here we are. But be aware that we continue to monitor that. But hopefully as we get into the cooler months, and I tell you what I would like, I'd like for November rolls around, it gets down so low that we don't have to wear a mask at all. Because we are going to host, put it on your calendar, 19 November, we are hosting the uh, Coastal Bend Mission Center conference. So that would even make it just a little better. And that following day on Sunday the 20th, please put that on your calendar. Um, the Apostle David Nini, right? David's going to be with us, and he's going to be delivering the message that day. So we will have the Apostle speaking uh, right here in our congregation on the 20th. What other things do we have today? Prayer concerns, please get your prayer concerns into Scott by Thursday evening if possible, but please, if, if it's Sunday morning at this time, please let us know. We want to include anyone that needs to be lifted up. So please do that. Crafty ladies is this Tuesday at Lila's. So if anybody in San Antonio, needs a lift, let me know. I'm happy to come by and pick you up. And I promise you, I will deliver you back home after it's over. So crafty ladies, put that on your calendar. The memorial service for John Wircham is uh, what, the 15th, that's next Saturday at 1 p.m. at Carrier Parkway 
congregation in Grand Prairie. Uh, Patty, as she always does, puts all that information up in our uh, calendar that she sends out to everybody. Uh, so if you need the particular address, whatever, please refer to that or give me a call. I can give it to you too. So, uh, but if you'd like to attend that, that's next Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, Bible class, theology classes, Tuesdays, 6.30, uh, junior high, senior high class on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So Kelly is uh, out, not with us today because she's not feeling well. So Kelly, if you're out there on Zoom, I want you to know I added you to the prayer list. So, uh, if you now bow with me, I will bring our prayer concerns this morning. Dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be attending this opportunity to worship you and your son on this beautiful Sunday here in San Antonio, at the Shenandoah congregation. And Lord, there are people that we would like to lift up this morning. Um, Misty W, uh, coming home, she had a fall and she is in pain. And we ask that, uh, that uh, you're with her and that you help her with her pain and get her the, the right attention that she needs. Uh, Kelly P, uh, she's sick today. And we ask that uh, you be with her and, and help her with a, a quick recovery from whatever it is that she's, uh, it's ailing her. Uh, Yolanda A, this Wednesday is traveling to Houston. Methodist uh, to have tests done um, concerning heart issues that she has. So ask you to be with her and the doctors who are attending to her and uh, pray that uh, you will be there for her and, and involved in their thoughts and uh, their care that they're going to provide her. Lord, we have grateful news that we're very thankful for. Uh, Assyria W is home and doing better than expected. Uh, and Lord, she would like to uh, thank you for watching over her. And she would like to thank all of those who have lifted her up in prayer. Because uh, this is as close to a miracle that you could probably get from the condition that she was in. Carol B., uh, doing so much better. And thank you so much for watching over her. And so much better that she was out and about and went to a birthday party. So Lord, we are grateful that you've been watching over her and helping her as she comes to the latter ends of the care and healing that she needs so that she can be whole again. And Lord, I personally am very thankful for all the wonderful people that uh, make up our Shenandoah Community of Christ body. I ask that you bless them and that you watch over each and every one of them as they go through their lives and uh, that you're always in attending for them uh, because we all love you so much. So Lord, we praise you and lift our prayer concerns and for the things that we're grateful to you this day in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, amen. So at this time, we will transition to the service. And like I said, we're very grateful to have Jay with us. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I always enjoy it. He, is, he brings great ministry to us. and I'm sure we're in for a treat today as he, uh, he speaks and delivers our message. So good morning, I've already done that, so I guess I don't have to do that again. So, but good morning, welcome. Um, our theme today is seek the welfare of the city. And um, our call to worship this morning, I'm going to read a scripture and, but I really would like all of us at home and here, I'm gonna read it slow 
so that you can kind of digest what the scripture uh, is telling us. And then after, I'm gonna have a little screenshot here with, with four questions or things that we should ponder based upon this scripture. Now, I'm not looking for open answers. It's just a time to reflect. The scripture comes from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not 10 cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. So now we're going to come up on the screen. And as I read these, I will pause a little so that we can do a little interjection in our own thoughts on how we are in relationship to this. Think about a time when you were aware of being blessed by God. It might have been something as subtle as receiving an unexpected cheery card or email message or as striking as being hired for a job you really needed. Were you like the nine leopards who hurried off without first sharing gratitude? If you have ever failed to thank God for blessings, seen and unseen, pause a moment now and offer a prayer, confessing your failure and offer thanks. So it's just kind of, and by the way, I'm, I'm guilty of all of those from one time or another. So, Isn't it interesting to know how much we can learn from something that happened so long ago and how those things can relate and touch our own lives and make us reflect on the things that maybe we should pay a little more attention to when these type of things occur to us and not take them for granted. I believe that God knows all. I believe that God sees all. So since that is, if that is true, which I believe is true, then why wouldn't I? But 
on my journey in life, I have overlooked that from time to time. But hopefully during the journey, which I think it has, I tend to pay a little closer attention as I think we all do. So for this call of worship, just reflect on these things and, and see how this particular piece of scripture impacts us in the way we think and our relationship with God. So at this time, we're going to transition into our opening hymn. And it is a hymn of praise, number 101, Praise the Lord, the Almighty. And it's led by Kathleen Cole. So remember to wear your mask. Oh yeah, I did bring it. Remember to wear your mask uh, as we sing. And I ask you to stand and stay standing through the invocation. Dear, kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we come here today to worship you and your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that you be with Jay as he brings us our message this morning, and that you will bless each and every one of us that the things that we will receive during this hour. For this, do ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Please be seated. At this time, I will ask Jackson to bring us our prayer for peace. Please join me in prayer. Creator of all whose love enfolds each one of us, friend, enemy, family member, or alien, we often struggle to accept in our minds and hearts how broad and deep is your love. Instead of seeing that our welfare is intertwined with that of others, we often think that our concerns, our lives, our situations are more important. Help us to open our closed minds and hearts in order to grow to care for others as you do. In the name of Jesus, who showed us that you are love. Amen. 
Now here it will bring us our disciples' generous response. The disciples' generous response is from the Doctrine and Covenants 154.5a, and it is adapted. Seek ways of effecting a greater understanding of the meaning of the stewardship of temporalities as a response to my grace and love so that the understanding of the principle may stir the hearts of the people as never before. These words were given to the church in 1980. In the years that have elapsed, much has been done to help us better understand and respond to our generous God by being generous ourselves. You're invited today to consider again what that means in your life and what will be your response. As we share our mission ties, either by placing money in the plate located in the back of the room or by going to our World Church website or through e-tithing, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for all our blessings and that you bless the offerings we receive today and that we use them wisely in supporting your mission here in this community. In these things we ask, in Jesus' name, amen. Now let us sing hymn number 222, Gentle God, When We Are Driven, led by Beyond the Walls Choir.
How incredibly nice it is to stand here in front of uh, many faces and, and the eyes. It's sometimes it's challenging whenever you're zoomed and, and you don't get to talk to live bodies like face-to-face uh, -face like we are right now. Our theme today is Seek the Welfare of the City. And I wanna talk about community. I wanna talk about roots. I want to talk about the challenges that we face and how that we can overcome and be, be a better citizen in the communities with which we live. The theme comes from a scripture in Jeremiah 29.1, and this is what it says. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because it prospers, you too shall prosper. This was a letter provided by Jeremiah to the people in exile and they were expecting from the prophets that they would return quickly to their land. And they thought that they would all be back rehoused where they were in less than 70 years. And in reality, that not, did not take place for many, many, many 300 years. Our church believes in community. It believes as its core value in the value of the people that make up the community. This ideal is in our enduring principles, the blessings of community. And from that principle, we are reminded of the gospel of Jesus Christ is expressed best in community life, where all people become vulnerable to God's grace and to each other. True community includes compassion for and solidarity with the poor, the marginalized and the oppressed. And it also upholds the worth of all persons while providing a healthy alternative to self-centeredness, isolation and conformity. And our sacred community provides nurture and growth opportunities for all people, especially those who cannot fully care for themselves. Whenever the people went into exile, it was much a population of us and them. They felt uprooted. I believe everybody in this room today has been uprooted one time or another. Is that not true? Is anybody truly just their roots and, and their growth has all been right here at this very place. I grew up in a couple of small communities in Southeastern Illinois. It was a small town, two small towns that are about an hour east of St. Louis, halfway between St. Louis and Evansville, Indiana. Commonly known to many church-going people as the Bible Belt, uh, lots of very dedicated 
Southern Baptists and some dedicated Pentecostal uh, religious faith movers. And close to our home was the Brush Creek Campgrounds to our church. That was one of the earliest campgrounds ever established. And we are probably, I would guess, maybe four hours south of Nauvoo, five hours south of Chicago. So you kind of get the, the context there. My family settled in that part of the country. My ancestors did at the turn of the 19th century, early 1800s. And Illinois became a state in 1820. They were early farmers there. My wife's family settled from Ireland into farming in 1870s. And their roots are right there where their roots ever were. Uh, in 1966, my family moved from Mount Vernon to Salem, Illinois, about 20 miles north. And it was an uprooting for my family because my parents had never, ever lived out of the town in which they were raised and their grandparents and their grand great grandparents and they're all buried there i can go visit anytime i want our roots ran deep and in leah's family and in other church members families their roots ran deep as well and many of those roots ran deep in within this church movement generations were there and generations of our family attended the Brush Creek campgrounds. And several now are buried over there. The roots run deep and that causes the community to be so tied together. So you can imagine whenever these people were exiled and they left those roots, they left that community and they were taken to a foreign place and all their roots were gone. All their community was gone. So God counsels them through Jeremiah. You need to embrace these people. You need to embrace their ways. This is your place now. This is where your new roots will be which is a lot of what we've done here at Shenandoah. We were uprooted, we came, we planted new roots and expanded families and opportunities. Seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile. I don't think we were exiled here, but sometimes it feels like you are in exile when you are different from all those around you. Uh, whenever I was in Salem, um, the town that uh, I finished high school in, I, we lived there from 66 until my parents moved here. And um, my roots were really within the church. My friends were the church friends. Um, there were four of us in Zion's League, uh, my brother and I, and uh, Kim Stormont or Kim Job was one of those. And they had recently relocated back to Salem where Kim's roots were from. And uh, they moved to Danville, I guess with the railroad with her dad's uh, work and then moved back. And Kim's family roots go back for many, many generations. And uh, Kim and I were in the same grade in high school, junior high and high school together. And uh, we shared the same music teacher. Uh, Mrs. Wilson taught everybody in town piano lessons if they really wanted them. And she uh, studied in Paris and she was an opera singer in New York. And she married her husband in our town and moved there. And in order to keep the music going, she became uh, the one that instructed us all. And those roots run deep. Uh, to this day, there's still students around the world that are singing and playing. Uh, some went on to New York and became opera performers, uh, but many of them ended up like 
uh, many of us uh, were still active in, in our music one way or the other. Uh, Mrs. Wilson helped me in 1969, I believe, prepare for the planning for my first church service. And she helped me play some of those first hymns so that I could play them for church. And so that was more than 50 years ago whenever I started playing for, for church services. And just the every month through our food pantry. We are helping people. Last month, we expended over $30,000 to help with rents and utilities to keep people in shelter. And we're seeing numbers driven like we haven't seen in the last decade. People that walk in my door every day 
that are anxious and fearful. They don't know where tomorrow is going to bring them funds, food, shelter, whether their kids are going to have the lights disconnected when they get home from school. Jeremiah tells the exiles in Babylon, do whatever you have to do to survive this and live. Do whatever you need to do to survive and live. Pretty basic. Live here. Make your life here. Meanwhile, live and love and fully and comprehensively as if you were with us here in Jerusalem. And then he tells them more. They shouldn't just expand their families and lives. They should proactively promote the welfare of Babylonians and ha that have them captive. Oh, the people that are different from us? We need to embrace them? That's kind of a foreign thought, too. Yes, we are still called to embrace those that are different, those that captivate us, perhaps our enemies, those that are probably not native to our neighborhood. The hostages in Babylon are told to make their captivity into a time of spiritual discipline. And in that, a time of showing true mercy to all around them, even their captors, even their neighbors who don't support their captivity or just can't be bothered to care. Oh, there's an interesting thought. Be bothered to care. We are called to be bothered to care. We are called to make a difference in the lives of others. We are called to care. And we are called to be the peacemaker. So for all of those that are struggling from whatever is the cause of their challenges, we are called to be the peacemaker. So can you do that? What can you do? Sometimes it's easy to put a couple of cans in the donation bucket that goes to uh, fuel the food pantries. That helps. Sometimes, you know, it helps to send your check to Salvation Army or whatever and buy toys for the kids at Christmas or now we're raising turkey funds. That's the easy part. Where's the hard part? Where's the hard part where you're supposed to take your arms and em embrace those that are different, those that are challenged? And you never know when you walk down the street tomorrow, the next day, when you're in the grocery store, that the person that needs embracing is in line with you at the store. I hope you feel affirmed, free, and fully alive. I hope this is exactly where you want to be. No matter how you feel or where you are, you can seek the welfare of the community around you, or its welfare is intimately tied up in your own. Your welfare is tied up in the welfare of the others with whom you embrace. Perhaps you have something in common with the Judeans in Babylon. You may not be in exile, but like them, you know yourself to be the other. You may be the other because of the way you think or the way you look or the culture that you come from, your language, or something about your identity or the things you believe. Back to Salem, whenever Kim and I were in high school and we were the Zion's leaguers there, uh, we felt like we had this band of brothers that we were the ones that were in church, my goodness, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and on Wednesdays because our dads were pastors or whatever. 
And uh, I always felt like we were the outsiders because we were churched. Uh, and I didn't really realize the depth of some of the persons I went to high school with, uh, how churched that they were. And it's, uh, it's really interesting now to look on Facebook and see the dedication and the involvement of some folks that I thought would never find their two feet in, inside of a church. And uh, I always smile thinking, oh my goodness, it's like uh, they really have a dedication to their faith. And, uh, and the other thing is those in, involved in, in music continue to do that. So for those that uh, grow up with and in music, it's a lifetime of enjoyment and commitment and sharing the welfare with the others. It wasn't always easy to be different. We look around and think that everyone everywhere is different. Actually, there's only I that was different and stared at. Jeremiah tells us that, especially when we know ourselves to be other, different, it's time for special spiritual discipline, for showing mercy to others, and for seeking their welfare. It is our otherness that may give us the capacity to do so. So if you are the other, celebrate your otherness. Celebrate your otherness that thank God I'm a little bit different than my community. And then be grateful. Be grateful. The next part is gratitude for what our otherness can teach us. For the ways is with the Samaritan that it can be the key to salvation. And just think about the, the story in Luke and the lepers. They were so different. And they were exiled. They were banned. Don't touch, don't see, don't talk, don't get close to. So what a joy whenever they were healed, and especially the Samaritan that went back to thank God, to thank Jesus for bringing him along because he was so isolated and felt so different and was part of the other world to be included once again. So of the others, be acceptable and be forgiving. You know that from your own experiences, what the ramifications on a human life can really be. What I want to say is that our otherness is understood and validated by God, who made us proudly who we are. And that God invites us at all times to reach out to the otherness of the world. And not as a handicap, but as a portal to a life of deepened faithfulness. Nothing comes cheaply. Just ask the hostages in Babylon to whom the prophet said, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you. And pray to God on their behalf. For it's in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Later on in Jeremiah, he states, For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a future. And that's how I'll close that God has a plan for you. He has a future for you. He offers you peace and understanding and loves your otherness as we should also do. Thank you. He gave us a, a lot to think about. He gave me a lot to think about. Uh, I think we're all blessed with what you brought to us today. Focus moment.
focus moment tells us that in today's message, we heard Jesus telling the disciples and followers that people will argue with him. That people will disagree about whether God's better way to live is the best. Sometimes people disagree, disagree with God's way because they must change their living to be aligned with God. But it is not our job to argue or convince people about whether they should live God's way or that it's the best way. Our job is to follow Jesus, to live God's way and be that light, be the example of the world. You know, I, well, I don't know about you all, but I know about what happened in my life. And I always felt that I had to defend what I believe. And that would lead to arguing. That would lead to a lot of this. And it took me a long time to understand what we're called to do, what I was called to do. And it's pretty simple. If I just get rid of the emotional content of trying to defend. What's pretty simple about it, what God is asking us to do is share, share. God's message, Christ's salvation, power of the Holy Spirit to others, to enlighten them. And after that, it's, it's out of my hands. Boy, isn't it so hard to let go, particularly after you told them what, hey, you know, here's, here's the good news, but you don't see it. It was for me, but God tells us, you've done your job. It's in my hands now. So I can definitely relate to Jay's message today. And uh, it's right down to it, it's pretty simple. The people who make it hard are us. And we forget that once we've done our job, he knows what, what is best. He will get involved. And on our job, it's pretty simple. We go to the next person and expose them to God, to Christ, and Holy Spirit. At this time, we're going to uh, go into our closing hymn, our benedictory hymn. It's number 657. Make us, O oh God, a church that shares. Oh, how appropriate is that song, right? Uh, it's led by the Coles Choir. Talk about being blessed. We have a lot of songs out there led by the Coles Choir. And... Uh, so I'm going to ask you to stand and stay standing during uh, the benediction. And after the benediction, we'll ask John to open up Zoom so that everybody can join and share with us and those who would like to share with those that are attending from home. So please stand. <laughs>
Dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us uh, during this hour with Jay's message. And as we leave here, I pray that uh, the message will stay with us and be in our thoughts and minds of the things that uh, we need to do in our lives. And we ask that uh, for those here in the sanctuary, that Lord, you'll get us home safely or to wherever we're going this afternoon and that you bless those at home also that uh, you're with them and that they go somewhere today that they too will get to where they're going at home safely. So Lord, we are grateful to be here. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for your son and we're grateful for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And through these things we ask and are grateful for in your son's name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Savior. Amen. Thank you all for being here. And thank you all in Zoom for joining today. We're blessed. Thank you. Emma. Blessed to be a blessing. Oh, by the way, uh, we had a water problem, uh, pressure problem in the bathrooms. And I forgot to say that earlier. But I don't know if the pressure's back up yet. No. So please don't use the bathrooms. Uh, you're going to have to, you know, place else. All right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Patty. How are you, Patrick? Good morning, Jim. I'm just fine. Live and well. Good. good, good, good. Hi, Patrick. It's Carol. Hi. How's Carol? Doing better. Thank you. Good to see you, Patrick. Yeah, good to see Hi, all Scott. of you. Hi. That was a great message this morning, Jay. If you can hear us. Yep. Yeah. It yeah, sure he, was. He, yes. he's doing what uh, Chatter Day Saints love to do. I mean, <laughs> Latter Day Saints love to do. <laughs> but it was great. I agree. I I really enjoyed it too. And Carol, oh, great news this morning. Uh, well, I'm on. A, you know, I think I'm on the track to wellness. I'm not there yet, all the way, but I'm feeling better mentally too. So that's great. Well, I bet Jim's glad you're feeling better too. Yeah, Jim's had a lot to do with it. <laughs> oh, well, we'll still be praying. Thank you. Very I need it. Complete there. Thank you. Are you still making your own lunch? This morning. Welcome, Fred. Hey, Patrick, Sandy, Roger. Hi. Hey. Hi. Gosh, wonderful. Kelly, I hope you're feeling better. Oh, I think she what just disconnected. Uh, yeah. Oh. Has anyone heard from Wayne? Is everything okay? We were on vacation, so I'm not sure. Yeah, he's good, Cindy. He he's is? okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. they like his, house, many... his house is okay? And... Yep, yep. I think the worst that happened to them is they lost some food out of their refrigerator and freezer. Other than oh. that, everything is good. I oh. called Wayne and I didn't get a return call, so I get hope. I'm glad to hear things are good yeah yep they sure are i don't know about y'all but i learned a lot more about cam today <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i knew there was a connection between the two uh, but i thought well i hope you all have a blessed week god bless you you too earl you earl bye-bye <coughs> well, i missed it by half but uh, I enjoyed what I got. Yeah. Good. Glad you got it. Cindy and Roger, it's good to see you. We love you. Yeah, you too. I'm sorry we missed you. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's, that's okay. okay. We'll, that was so funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it was nice Wait, to get, don't get worry, out. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll come by and pick them up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, um, I'm a pass, a uh, national passport. I guess they call them geeks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we went up to, have you ever been to Palo Duro? State Park? No, I want to go, but I haven't been there. I guess, I, I hope I'm not misspeaking, but I think it's like the second biggest canyon in the U.S. And second the biggest? High canyon. Second. Oh, okay. And um, it's so interesting because you drive and it's like a plane and then all of a sudden the earth dives down and it's a canyon. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, That's it's good. really cool. And the hike to... The most famous hike is like, I think the most popular hike is the lighthouse hike and you hike, it's a pretty flat trail. And then the, there's just a little elevation at the end and it's really cool. I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. Yeah. And they have a Christmas program, I believe that they put well, on. They do. They do. I think so. I think my sister oh. went to it. Wow. Down in the canyon, as I recall. Yeah. Probably can Google it and see what it's about. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we were out adventuring. And we were going <laughs> to return some pots and pans. For no, I know. I know. <laughs> and, and so we text, I texted him and I said, we're leaving now. And Roger says, Carol, we're in San Angelo. <laughs> and Marilla. <laughs> and Marilla. <laughs> and Marilla. <laughs> Oh, well, don't just... don't get that in your head. You'll be seeing that song <laughs> for like two hours. <laughs> Amarillo by morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I said, that's OK. We just came out for a nice ride. That's all right. Oh, that's a good attitude. <laughs> hey, Carol. <laughs> yes. If you hear about a sing along Messiah, let me know. Oh, OK. Will do. Though I won't have Elaine to drive me downtown again. Yeah. <laughs> We sure miss them. I don't know if I'll be doing that this year, but I'll let you know if I hear of anything. Oh, thank you. I'm, so I was hoping you could, but we'll see, right? Right. Hey, Kim, maybe I could go with you. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. It'd be harder to meet up, but uh, it's still work. Yeah, that's true. That's true, because you guys are out. Yeah, we're on the uh, opposite ends. Oh, okay. Well, I am too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. We're in a different county. Even, yeah. <laughs> Guadalupe. So. Oh, you guys are? You're in Guadalupe? Right. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah we're, almost to bit of a drive. we're almost to Kamal. Yeah. Huh. So it takes us mm -hmm. a little while to get there at church. Which is why we've been tending to Zoom more. Yeah, but now that the mass mandate's letting up something, maybe we can actually get to church. <laughs> we, uh, although this is pretty convenient, just being able to turn on the computer and talk to people. It's very nice, but it's also very nice to be there, and I miss it. Yeah, me yeah. too, me yeah. too. Patty, I guess you're not going to be visiting anytime soon. Well, I think the earliest that we may will be sometime in January. Um, at least that's what the timeline's looking like right now, but it changes. So we'll see. Yeah. But be a, yes. nice be a nice time to be down here instead of there, unless we have another snow apocalypse. That's right. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, we'll see. So, Jim's doing good with his treatments and he's everything? Doing, yeah, he's doing good right now. So, we just have to. Wait and see if it if it does the trick and gets rid of the tumor. So, yeah, we think about you all the time, Patty. Right. Yeah, yeah I think of all of you all the time too. You're the glue that holds us together with all the slides and bulletins and all <laughs> that good stuff. <laughs> you sure are. I, I enjoy I enjoy doing them. So don't find a new congregation. No, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> There's a couple of uh, CFC uh, Christ congregations in the area, but um, the one is very small, and I'm not even sure if it's still open anymore. And I, I haven't tried the other one yet. I need to do that one of these Sundays. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, We're a little no. possessive over yeah. here, Patty. <laughs> I could do I could do like Wayne's doing and you know and see you know. No, your roots no. are here. You think about that sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have I have roots here and in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, you were well, yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and actually mm, how many uh, right, years? <laughs> yeah, right now I spent more years in San Antonio than I spent here. Hey, there you go. <laughs> but uh, as soon as I get a three or four years older, it'll be kind of half and half. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I had to ask Kim a question this morning about what is Zion's League? And she said, this is a youth group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. For many years ago. Yeah. Many years. Yeah. Yeah. So... And I was the only girl for most of it. Well, pretty well all of it in our group. Well, that must have been fun. Not necessarily. <laughs> I still want you to tell the story of Jay's. Oh, no, no. You kill me. <laughs> I've gotten some stories about Jay from Kim. So embarrassing ones. Well, you don't want to tell him then. <laughs> no, no. I mean, the only one I will tell is when I introduced him to my puppy when we were in high school and she peed on him. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> well, I'm going to sign off, y'all. Great seeing you. Yeah. You too. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Bye, Carol. I said, I'm nobody enjoying can... chatting with y'all, but I'm going to sign off too. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, all. Yeah, take care.